So without further ado, first time in a very long time, we speak to an actual living, breathing UFC Octagon girl. Hello, Luciana. Bom dia. How are you? Hi, bom dia. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I got I got to start by saying I, I'm not a paralegal. How are you? Fuck. Did it not did it not say that in your bio? Did I screw that up? At one point it no, did, no? I didn't say that. Ugh. No, I went to law school okay. in Brazil. Yeah. And then I took a master's in law in the US. Now I'm in that weird situation where I have to pass the bar, but I, you know, I, I haven't passed yet. Okay, okay. So I'm not an attorney yet, but I can be in yeah, the US in Brazil. So that's that's the short answer, I guess. Was that version. was I giving you too much credit by saying paralegal? No, uh, technically, uh, I don't no. want to talk about paralegals, but there, it's a different oh, okay. area. <laughs> See, as you can tell, I'm not very smart <laughs> and I don't understand this world at all, uh, but it well, is very right. impressive. And I think a lot of people didn't know that about you, that you do have a master's from USC, that you do work in this field. Like on the weekends, you're doing that, but you could be suing me on a Monday. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I might as well after this show. Who knows? Wow. Because I mischaracterized. <laughs> it might be <laughs> yes. I mischaracterized your life. I apologize. I never actually sued anybody. Okay. Not I, even that. Myself. Myself. Uh, yeah. And what, what kind of law, by the way? Everybody asks me this question. It's so funny. Uh, when I was in Brazil, so uh, I worked for many law firms. And just like here in the US, the law firms have all different areas. So we separated to like civil civil law and then criminal law, pretty much, right? So civil law firms, that's where I work the most. So I did a lot of like family law, employment law, uh, tax law, and then I work for companies. I also work in the public sector. So like state courts, uh, local courts, uh, did a little bit of everything. And then here in the U.S., completely different animals. So my master's is in U.S. law, wow. but my major is in entertainment law because I figured that, hey, by work with working with sports and entertainment, why not, right? And also I live in L.A. where sure it, it's all the entertainment in industry is pretty much here right so but i haven't started yet <laughs> okay um and by the way i'm looking for a good entertainment lawyer so if you do get that um you know past that bar you know perhaps yeah 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 i don't know yeah, how, what your rate is everyone hire me everyone yes for... <laughs> and and by the way uh you know worth I actually noting. like criminal law by the way like criminal law a lot okay uh that is a crazy world i saw you tweeting about the um what is it? The Ma Dog? Murdoch. Mur yes, Murdoch. Murdoch yes. Yeah. You're into that. Yep. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's a real sickness almost. I, I love watching documentaries, true crime documentaries. Um, I love that. Love following the trials and everything. Funny enough, I never worked with criminal law, but I do have this feeling that I should be working with criminal law. I just, everybody tries to get me out of it. Like say, hey, this is dangerous. You should not, blah, blah, blah. But it, I still feel drawn to it, you know, like. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> what I was going to say and give you credit for, English isn't your first language. So to get a master's in the United uh, States yeah. in that world, yeah. in that subject, in that field is pretty damn impressive. So much respect. Salute yeah. to you. Thank you. Yeah. Learn by myself by watching TV. Really? Who would have thought that watching so much TV? Yeah. What yeah, shows? I, never, I, I don't come from money. You know, my family, they, they, they couldn't afford, uh, you know, English teachers, anything like that. So that's pretty much how I learned. Any particular Music. shows like really taught you that your friends, Seinfeld, oh my the gosh. Office, you name it. Yeah. All the good ones. <laughs> wow. So you would just watch those without really understanding. And then over time you understood more and more. Yeah, so I would initially, I mean, this started with when I was a teenager, right? So I would, there was this channel in Brazil that they would show video clips, you know, music clips, and they would add these subtitles in Portuguese, subtitles in Portuguese. And then I just like my brain started making a connection, you know, to the sound, to the word, to the meaning. And then I, I just, yeah, that's kind of how it worked for me. I, it's, it's hard to explain, I guess. I, I, I was meant to leave in the US and speak English, who knows? <laughs> I love it. Much respect. Now, as I mentioned, correct me if I'm wrong, you have never actually translated for anyone, especially live no. interview. Yes. No, and by the way, if anyone, you know, the, the the internet trolls out there, they they think it's not a good it's not a good job. You can feel free to blame Ariel because it was his this idea. This is all my fault. This is all my fault. <laughs> Never done it. Don't know what to expect, but let's see. <laughs> um, and by the way, we've had some pretty bad translators in the past, so I have a feeling you're going to do much better than most of them. But okay, I did not want to throw you into the deep end 
uh, without any practice. So I wanted to okay. play you a couple clips now and see how you do, how you feel. I think that's good. It's like riding a bike. You don't just jump onto the bike. You, you go a little okay. slow. So okay. I, I want to play you actually a clip of Charles Oliveira speaking to my good friend, Daniel Cormier, but he's speaking in uh, Portuguese. He doesn't speak English. And we'll play the clip and then you'll tell us what he said. This is a bit of a practice run for him coming up. How do you feel about that? Okay, let's do it. Okay, here's Charles Oliveira speaking recently to Daniel Cormier. O olho no olho, isso vai acontecer, isso é normal. Eu vou sempre olhar, eu quero olhar, quero mostrar que eu tô ali, que eu tô vivo, sabe? Mas com certeza, o jeito que eles tentaram vender a luta, lógico, a gente aprendeu que todos querem vender a luta para poder ganhar dinheiro, mas o jeito que eles venderam a luta, eles venderam de uma forma, muitas vezes, desrespeitada. Tanto do Isla, quanto do Cabibo, e a conta de técnico, mas todo mundo tem que entender que na hora do infight só vai ter um lá dentro. Todos os outros não vão estar. Então, com certeza, rolou muito desrespeito da minha pessoa, mas, cara, não tô nem aí porque esses caras falam, deixa eu te falar. Ok, how do you feel about that? Ok, so basically he said, yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen, you know, but the way that they promoted the fight, he felt that it was very disrespectful, and, you know, in the end of the day, you're gonna get in a cage, and it's, it, you know what's gonna happen, you know, like, somebody's gonna win, but the 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 way the whole promotion deal with it, that's how I, what I got from it, yeah. right? <laughs> the way the promotion uh, deal with it, he, he felt it was disrespectful. He didn't mention any names, though, so I was, I was just... That was a great job. That was a great. I was worried it was too long. Was it? Too... <laughs> but I'll say that was a lot. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna forget about it. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you could write like keywords on a piece I'm sure of paper. I did, I'm sure I did forget something, but yeah, uh, I, I have the best intentions, right? If, sure. If I skip something. I'll try to to get the whole idea. And 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 maybe you could write like a keyword or two if you have a notepad in front of you, so you don't forget. Maybe a tip. I don't know. I don't want to yeah, make. Actually, I... I was gonna say before I, I I went live. I was like, does it look like I'm in in the basement or something? Because I close all the windows. This is my study area. You can't see anything except for you know. The... No, it's good. It's uh, it's very professional. But yeah, I do have a good. bunch of books here in front of me, and yeah, so I'll I'll do that. He speaks very <laughs> quickly, right? He does. Yeah, he does. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, you're very professional. We're in a basement as well, so it's 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 very uh, very much. <laughs> oh, you're. Page. Yeah, kind of fan fancy basement in New York, if you, <laughs> right? Same thing, New York, LA. Now I have another clip for you. Now this is a very unique one. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Darren Till. Yes, you know Darren Till? Oh, that that one is, yeah, I know, but it's it's hard. I hope I don't have to translate the English. <laughs> oh no, it's his it Portuguese. You know he speaks Portuguese. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm okay. just kidding. All right, so here's yeah. Darren Till speaking in Portuguese. Let us know what he says. De um ano de sem lutar, ah, é difícil, né? É, eu tive dois, dois lesões e esse camp também eu tive lesões durante o camp, mas eu. É difícil falar, mas o, o corpo e o, 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 o mente tem que estar tem que tá os dois no mesmo caminho, sabe? Tipo. Como é que eu vou explicar melhor? Tipo, os dois têm que entender os dois, o mente e o corpo. E meu corpo, às vezes, é um pouco mais em frente do meu, do meu mente. É, da minha mente, meu mente, não sei falar direito, mas... É, um ano sem lutar, sem dinheiro, é, so long, esperando long meus lesões recuperar deles. É, foi, foi difícil para, para o mente, mas eu tenho um mente forte. Então... Wow. Okay. Look at you writing away. All right. So he said, basically, he's he spent one year without fighting, you know, with injuries, and it was it was really hard for him to say because uh, the body and the mind need to be aligned, and his body at times was you know in front of his mind, but he had to uh, keep his mind strong because he didn't have any money for for this whole year without fighting, so he had to to be mentally strong. That's what I got. Wow. <laughs> This is incredible. I feel like you found a new uh, a new line of work here. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe people hire me, you know. If, Could you imagine? Do I have what it takes? Yes, I think job, you do. You know? Imagine you're the octagon and girl. And after all the translators. Yes. You no know, job. You know? And then you go into the cage for the post-fight interviews as well. You get double the pay. Yeah, I do both. I yes. do everything. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. 
Okay. Well, make me, make me interview people too. Let's do it. You know what, Ariel? Maybe you should hire me. Uh, I feel like we're coming up with a lot of jobs here for you. This is very exciting. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. I think you're going to do great. So hopefully, this uh, perhaps, I don't know, maybe calmed your nerves a little bit going into the big interview with Charles. I haven't gotten an opportunity to speak to Charles in almost two years. So this is a big one. Yeah. So don't, you know, don't feel any pressure. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But you're you're used to the pressure. You're used to the limelight because of your job. Long time UFC octagon. How how long has it been? Nine years, eight years, almost nine years. Wow, long time. Yeah, you've I'm seen getting... a lot. You've been to a lot of places. You've been all over the world, uh, and and yeah. you've been in some funny spots as well. I wanted to actually ask you about a couple of spots uh, that we found in the archives, and ask uh. you what you were thinking in these moments. Uh, we have one from a, a weigh in in uh, in Moscow. Here's the first one. Tell us uh, what you're thinking here. Okay. Oh, I remember that. So here's a young man who uh, seems to be wiping his feet in front of you and the lovely Carly Baker. And then we see your face over there like, whoa, bro, what's going on? What did, <laughs> what did you think? When, and we're, we zoomed in on you right over there. Like, oh, geez. What were you thinking when you did this? You know, it's funny because my expressions, I, I can't fake. If I like someone, you can see it, right? If I don't like it, you can see it. And... I'm very spontaneous. So whenever there's a fighter, I'm always wondering, because the camera is right on me. So I'm always wondering, like, what is he going to do that? You know, am I going to be hit some way somehow? So I don't think I, I, uh, I was, I thought something is specifically uh, specific. I was just like trying not to get <laughs> on camera. I, I thought like, it was oh, okay. <laughs> a little disrespectful that he's wiping his feet in front of you like that. It looked like he, almost like a dog who like kicks the dirt back. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it was some sort of ritual, you know, like to to bring him luck. I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, I was not expecting. But th- this happens all the time. Like, I, who was it? Was it Johnny Walker? Maybe that he, you know, did a backflip or something. There, there's always something going on. There was a one time it was uh, this this one actually went viral. It was Khabib, I think. He was doing an interview. Wait a second. Wait a second. I don't mean to interrupt you. We have the clip, Luciana. Ah, of course Let, you do. Yes, of course. <laughs> Let's play this Habib clip that she was. And we also have the Michelle Pereira one too. We came prepared. Here's uh, the of Habib clip that do. she's talking about. Yeah. So here he is talking, and you're just like shaking your head. You're confused as to what he's saying. I don't know. I think he was speaking in Russian at this point, no? <laughs> he was. And then his dad, you know, the late great Abdulmanap, walked in front of you. Yeah, obviously I don't speak Russian, right? So what happened was, is I see somebody from the waiting stage, you know, where at a stage there's this huge, a lot of people in front of you, photographers, all sorts of people. And then I see somebody doing this and I'm thinking like, is he doing that to me? Like, should I move? And I'm like, no, I can't move. Like, what are you talking about? Like, who are you? Right? Oh no. But I think he was actually talking with, uh, which with, I believe it was Khabib's dad for him to like come closer oh. so maybe they could take pictures of both of them. But then obviously on the clip, it feels like I'm making those faces for whatever Khabib's saying, but obviously I don't speak Russian. So no, it wasn't the case, but I did get a lot of hate because of that. Really? People are crazy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, people are crazy. People are saying like, oh, you don't respect Khabib the Eagle, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't even know what he was talking about. Like I don't speak Russian. It wasn't for him at all, like no disrespect, <laughs> you know, it was really someone in the crowd that I, it took me a while to recognize because we have so much light on us. Mm-hmm. It took me a while to realize, oh, that person is not from the staff. You know, that's, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, should I not be here? <laughs> you know? But the thing that I do respect about you is uh, you aren't afraid to speak your mind at times. I remember there was a situation last year where people were talking about, oh, you know, the Octagon girls are making more than the fighters. You clap back, you clap back, yeah. right? I mean, this is the tale as old as time, far away from the truth, because it's so easy. Think about it like it's Internet, right? Like you can finish the show here and go and write an article saying that I make two million dollars per hour and people are going to believe it. It's not true. We don't make more money than the fighters. Think about it like we have 14 girls across the globe. Right. And some girls work a few times a year because we don't have international fights, uh, you know, with the same frequency that we have in the U.S. But let's talk about the U.S. girls, right? We were in six total. We rotate. So you work once, twice a month if you're lucky. Let's use common sense. Do you really think we would be making more money than the fighters, than the commentators, than the broadcasters, you know, like to walk around a few rounds? Obviously not. And I'm not complaining about my pay either. Like, you know, no one put a gun in my head and said, hey, you know, sign this contract, be a ring girl. No, I did it 
for my own reasons, you know, for me, mostly it was the traveling, you know, like I, like I said, I, I don't come from money. You know, I, I, I really, when I say I don't come from money, I really don't, you know, like from the ages 16 to 19, I remember having like two pairs of jeans. So obviously traveling was never a reality. And luckily I was able to go to college. You know, my parent, my, my dad didn't have a degree. My mom was only able to get a degree after we were already in college. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I was, I didn't have food in the house, but I didn't grow up with luxury. So the fact that I was able to travel to get to know different cultures and, and that was, that was my reasoning. Right. And, but yeah, it's, it, it's just crazy to me, like that, that people still think that that's, that's true. And we get so much hate whenever a fighter say something like that, because, and, and, and again, like, I'm not saying, oh my God, I'm such a victim because I can still choose to like not be a ring girl or whatever, but it's kind of re- irresponsible sometimes when you do know it's not true, but you do use us as a scapegoat to create hype or clicks or whatever that is. And I'm not saying, hey, I have the most respect for fighters. I feel like, you know, they what they do, the commitment they have. I don't have that level of discipline. But I think it's amazing. It's so entertaining for us to watch. But I know it's a sacrifice. It comes with a sacrifice for them. So, uh, but we never, it was never a competition. We never said that we were more important than fighters, that we were carrying the company in our backs, backs not, nothing like that. But people always use us with all of all the people that you could use. You use us to to like complain about fighter pay, you know, like and and this happens a lot. And then every time it happens, it's usually someone that has like this huge platform and a voice that we don't have. You know, how how do you fight it? And then you get so much hate and and, and it's for everything. Like, remember, um, I think like last year, some fighter that is already retired came out with a book. Right. He wrote a biography from back when he was a fighter that at some point he had an orgy, blah, 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 and mentioned that there was a ring girl or ring girls. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was girl because I didn't read it. And people read that or or became aware of that book and started like commenting that we, we that's what we do, that we we date fighters. I never dated a fighter. You know, I never did. So I, it, it's just, it's just what people do. It's internet, right? Like you can be, hating on people and commenting terrible things from the comfort of your home and there's zero to zero zero accountability right your loved ones your neighbors your employers don't know that you're doing this but it happens you know so yeah that that was that was my view at the time like no we don't we don't make that money i would love to but we don't you know so it's respect i I respect you for speaking up and 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 defending (laughs) the honor of the octagon girls we have the michelle Pereira. Uh, clip. This is the one that you were referencing when he almost freaking did a backflip off the stage. Do we have that clip? <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to get it for you. This is a crazy one because here he is, Michelle Pereira. There you are in the back. And now he just keeps. I was like, oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> almost nailed right into you guys. Look at that one. Almost like, kicked okay. you in the head. He's pretty good. You know, Not I'll, bad. I'll give him all the credit. I, I, I couldn't do it. Well, I give you all the credit. You are great. And we have Charles Oliveira here joining us from Brazil. So are you ready? How do you feel? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm here for it. I have my my notepad. You know, if I skip some words, I'll just make up. I love it. All right. Well, thank you for doing this very much. Let's bring in Mr. Charles Oliveira, Du Bronx himself, the former lightweight champion. Charles, bom dia, my friend. How are you? Okay, let's do it. There he is, Charles Dubronx Oliveira, the former uh, UFC lightweight champion. And now we have Luciana back. He is gone. Yeah. Luciana, can I, I, I'm going to give you a standing ovation. You killed it. I mean, I'm, oh, I have, to, I have to bend over because my microphone, my uh, headphone thing is all messed up. But uh, that was incredible. <laughs> that was amazing. How do you, you know feel? What? I, I have a lot of respect for the translators because it's hard, you know, like, if you were able to translate simultaneously, that's, I guess, much easier. The fact that you have to memorize and then yeah. some words translated literally. but you, So you have to get the whole idea and say, okay, that's what he said and pick pick the best parts. But yeah, I think I... I thought you did amazing. You I, even I were throwing time. in things like, I didn't say Michael Chandler. You put Chandler in the question to just color it up. I mean, I thought you were poised. You were confident. You were calm, collected. I mean, I was really impressed. Honestly, truth, not sure if I thought it was going to go this well. I, th- I was thinking. Oh, hire me. <laughs> well, I was thinking. Anytime we have a Brazilian fighter, now we just have you on. Look at that. 
Amazing. Now, what's your Venmo? <laughs> great. I have to send you a uh, payment for this. So let me know your Venmo afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah sure. On the back end. Uh, but uh, did you enjoy it? Was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. And uh, never done it. You know, that's that's the, the beauty of this thing. You know, people just think like, oh, you're just a ring girl, brand ambassador. I'm like, no, I got to do so many things. I've I've tried to interview people in the past, you know. Um, How'd that go? Now, it was fun. It was fun. I got a little nervous. It was, uh, I'm, I'm not going to bring the, the, the brand's name here, but it was a cool project. We had it for a couple months, you know, like uh, this betting thing. I would like talk about, do a recap from the previous fights, talk about like, what are the pros and cons of who's the underdog of this fight, who I think is going to win and like things like that. It was very raw in terms of production, but it was, it was, it was a fun thing. I love yeah, it. So, kinda, kinda miss it. it was cool. so for yeah. you, everything that we just talked about and maybe translators in the mix, what, what is the dream for you? What is the dream job? Obviously, you have a great thing with the UFC now. You're enjoying it. But ultimately, that can't last forever, I would imagine, and, unless you want it to yeah. last forever. Um, yeah, sadly, no. no. Yeah, I can't, I can't be a, a ring car girl forever, unfortunately. It's, it, it's been a fun ride, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I would love to do more things, you know, on camera. Obviously, I'm nowhere near uh, some of our talents, you know, the bra broadcast people. Um, I'm talking about the women, but like you have the Laura Sankles and the, the Megan Olivies. They are doing such a phenomenal job. Not nowhere, you know, anywhere close to them. I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, but I would love to do more things, you know, maybe something more on the fun side. You know, we'll, 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 we'll see. <laughs> Well, you're killing it. And it's a big year coming up for you. I believe you're you're getting married as well. So Mazel Tov, congratulations. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. I haven't gotten the save the date yet in the mail. I don't know if it's coming or if I missed the cut. I don't know. But I'm still waiting and I'm available if you guys need me there. Um, you know, it's going to be a very, really small wedding. <laughs> okay, small wedding. I've heard that before. Uh, but it sounds like a wonderful time. And uh, I really appreciate you doing this. Honestly, you you came out of your comfort zone. You helped us out. I didn't have anyone else to do this. And so it was either me just speaking to him and him answering questions in Portuguese and me not understanding. So you helped us out big time. We owe you one and tremendous job on uh, on your part. Really, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, anytime. It was my first time on the show. Yes. Really, really private when it comes to interviews and I don't usually do that but that's that's the the answer I give but actually people no one wants to talk to ring girls well <laughs> we're different we're different we're very cultured <laughs> you saw the comments online oh she's not a fighter nah, no, screw those people watch it. we talked to darts champions actually I didn't want to put them on the spot but word on the street is that fight's happening in New Jersey um which is very close to here so if it does and you're working it please join us in studio I'm actually working on May oh, 6th. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm working on that one. That, that would be fun. So please join us. Let's do it. All right. Not? We'll bring in another Brazilian right, fighter. You can translate. translator. Yes, it would be incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it very much. All the best to you. We'll talk to you soon. Bom dia. Of course. Hey, I didn't show you this. Oh, wow. The, the whole time? <laughs> She's been in my lap the entire time. Oh my so gosh. Like, oh my God. I, that's the only way she's not going to have a meltdown. <laughs> oh my God. The other one is somewhere in the house. Wow. You actually, I did not see her once pop up. Well done. Oh yeah. Yeah. The little one. Well, yeah, so you, not only were you one. translating, you were multitasking as well. Wow. What can't you do? Of course. I'm a crazy chihuahua <laughs> lady. That's all I do. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Luciana. Talk to you All soon. Right. All the best. Thank you. Bye, guys. There she is, Luciana Andrade. How about that? Incredible.